All right, guys, today we're looking at some great industrial saw blades from Whiteside. And if you guys know Whiteside, they're synonymous with top tier router bits, really high precision machining processes, and they brought their expertise into the world of saw blades. And so the focus of today is going to be this 40 tooth crosscut combination blade. It's a full kerf blade. We'll share all the details with you. In a future series, look for my review and demonstration on this incredible 44 tooth dado blade. Both of them industrial saw blades, Whiteside Plus by Dymar. Stick around, we'll get into it. The specs on this general purpose blade, it's a full kerf blade, so 0.126 is the kerf dimension on that. It's a 40 tooth blade, so that perfectly positions it for general purpose work. You know, if you had a 24 tooth ripping blade, all you'd really want to do with that blade is just dedicated rip cuts. But at 40 tooth, you know, you start getting 30 tooth plus, you've got a chance of cross cutting, but 40 tooth uh, with this kind of blade geometry, you can certainly make uh, good rip cuts, but also great looking cross cuts. So it's the type of blade you can just put on your table saw and just leave it there for most general purpose work. As far as hook angle, this blade has a positive 15 degree hook and it makes it kind of a good general purpose blade. It's fairly aggressive in the way it cuts. You won't have much feed resistance as far as rip cuts and uh, it still has enough tooth count to do fine finish cuts on the cross cuts. So. We're going to put this blade to work on two saws today, a full three horsepower cabinet saw as well as a one and three quarter horsepower hybrid saw. Looks like we've got some anti-vibration and anti-resonance slots with solid metal fill. They've got that ground nice and flush. We've got ATB grind on the tooth geometry, large carbide teeth, good for many resharpenings. So let's head over to the table saw, see how it does. Okay, we'll start on a three horsepower saw stop cabinet saw. And we'll use the regular arbor washer. And we'll get that arbor nut spun on there. And I want to look at riving knife thicknesses. I had to look because usually I'm running a thin kerf blade. This thin kerf riving knife is 0.079. So I think we can get away with installing the thicker riving knife for the saw stop. This one is a 0 .090, 0 .090, and you want to be close to the size of the blade curve. Looks like we'll have to readjust that to make that work. You want to be close to the size of the blade curve, which is 0 .126 in the case of this 40 tooth general purpose blade. Okay, so we've adjusted the riving knife handle to accept the full kerf riving knife. The adjustment for that, by the way, is nothing more than just pushing this over towards the clamp assembly and it'll expose a little bit of a the bolt there. Just twist that bolt by hand and you'll be able to adjust between the full kerf and the thin kerf riving knife. Of course, we've adjusted our brake for this blade. Make sure we have proper clearance and we'll go ahead and drop our throat insert in place. Let's see how we did. Looks like we've got a nice smooth cut on the edge. A crisp edge maintained top and bottom there. Actually very smooth cut, no burning. This looks like a burn but it's actually just a knot that we've opened up in this piece of walnut. So completely burn free cut on that. Looks really good and the resistance to ripping was really minimal. The board sailed right through there, no problem with three quarter inch hardwood. Let's try a piece of maple. This one's a little thicker, about seven eighths of an inch. So that's a test. If you put maple or cherry past a blade, those are woods that just by their nature inherently they want to burn. And siding down this, I'm getting a nice straight cut. No visible saw marks off of that and just absolutely no burning. So, so far so good with these tests. 
let's raise the blade up here and see how we do with a little thicker piece of walnut. Some eight quarter here. Let's see how it does on that. Okay, this was our freshly cut surface. And I like to evaluate cuts in low angle raking light just to give it kind of the most critical look that we can. And nice finished quality here. I would say just a little bit of light sanding. Like any time you're, you're ripping off the table saw, you don't expect um, a finish ready cut, but um, this would be, certainly be a glue ready cut. And it does just as well with the thick eight quarter as we did with the, the seven eighths inch maple and the three quarter walnut. So we'll carry on and look at some cross cuts. So cross cutting that walnut eight quarter uh, the top surface is just perfectly crisp and clean. Bottom surface, you know, I've got zero clearance on this cross cutting sled, so as expected, no chip out at all there. On the blade entrance side, perfectly clean. On the blade, blade exit side, I mean, we're just talking the finest little 11 year old whiskers here, cheek fuzz, and just doing this it's gone. So basically a perfect cut. I don't see how you can get any better on that cross cutting eight quarter. So looking at the three quarter walnut, it uh, looks like the same story except for on the exit side of the cut there was absolutely no peach fuzz. Uh, just a perfectly crisp cut all the way around there. Looking at the cut edge on this maple, this one has just the tiniest bit of peach fuzz on that exit cut, no tear out at all. Just running your thumb across it like that twice and it's gone. Now all the edges are crisp and perfect. White side hasn't given us much to complain about with these general purpose combination blades, at least this 40 tooth full kerf variety. So, so far so good on the tests on the saw stop. Let's head over to the Laguna Fusion F2 and check out, see how the hybrid 1.75 horsepower saw handles this full kerf blade. Okay, we'll slide on that white side plus. Nice snug fit on the arbor there. Again, we'll use our arbor washer. And we'll get that nut threaded on. We'll get our riving knife installed. And the locking throw plate. Just want to spin this by hand, make sure I have enough clearance on the throat plate. I normally run a thin kerf blade on this saw. Looks like we'll do just fine. Evaluating the cut surfaces of the eight quarter walnut, I'd say this just looks just about perfect. Uh, no burning, nice flat surface. I'm very happy with that cut. What really surprised me is this 1.75 horsepower saw didn't have any trouble at all turning a full kerf blade on eight quarter hardwood. So that's really good. On this next piece, the three quarter inch, we did get one spot where there's a little bit of burning. This would have been where I stopped to um, engage my push stick. I thought initially that might have been the problem, which was concerning to me. But when I looked at it later, I realized this whole board bowed. It kind of released tension as I made that cut. And so I'm going to kind of discount this. Uh, I think anytime you get a board that moves, if the board moves away from the fence and it doesn't stay true to the blade, you know, what hope can you have for making a good clean cut? So the blade did just what any other blade would do in this situation, put a little burn, nothing you couldn't sand out, but I'm going to fault the lumber on that one. Now, as far as the, 
the maple three-quarter stock. Again, this is a wood that's really prone to burning. Um, this is stock that I've had in the shop for a while, and every time I put this on the saw, I get big burns um, across the ripped edges, and that's not so in this case. So it's a brand new blade, but I think it's also a very good blade, and that's a great sign. No burns in wood that are prone to burning, like cherry and maple. Okay, on to the crosscut tests on the 1.75 horsepower saw. We'll start with just a regular miter gauge because my crosscut sled for this saw does have a limitation. It can only cut stock up to about an inch thick um, just because of the fence design on that crosscut sled. So we'll start with just a regular miter gauge and we'll go ahead and do some crosscuts here. Evaluating the cross cuts on the second saw, the 1.75 horsepower saw, the cross cuts were almost polished on the side, very smooth cuts. Um, there was no chip out or tear out. If there was any fuzz, it was just a run your thumb across it and there's absolutely no damage left behind. Nothing that would increase your sanding workload above and beyond what you would normally do for the surfaces off your planer and joiner. So, very pleased and just pleasantly surprised with this blade overall. All right, guys, those are my thoughts on the Whiteside Plus 40 tooth general purpose cross cutting blade. This is a full kerf blade, although Whiteside has informed me that they're planning on releasing thin kerf blades to their saw blade lineup as well as part of this industrial series they have going. They look like really great products and they're working great in our testing. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.